So in today's video, we're going to be covering the Eoshin Tyro 69. Now, this is the cheapest micro brushless toothpick quadcopter build kit you could find online. I've done thrust tests on these motors, which we're going to cover. I've done the PID tuning, which I'm going to give to you. And also some things to watch out for and how I broke mine. Yes, how I broke mine. Let's start with the overall execution. The overall execution was okay, but there was no room for the receiver. And I didn't really post how I ended up putting the receiver because I just did that like the next day because I was tired that day. So I just put a zip tie right here on the side to hold it in place. But just make sure the propellers aren't going to touch it. And when you check for propellers going to touch it, also bend the propeller up slightly because when it's flying, these actually bend up slightly. So keep that in mind also. Also, the top canopy that holds the video transmitter and the camera needs to be redesigned or you probably will probably see more things on thingiverse that will actually make it better because of the canopies very minimal camera protection i broke the camera but it's not a really bad break basically the lens fell off the whole sensor so you can kind of see that this is the sensor right there this is supposed to be this is supposed to be on top of it here so yeah the, the glue just came off but i slid like right on the floor and that came off so I crashed. I mean, that, that's what happens when you crash. Now, since we are talking about the camera, so the camera quality is decent. It's good. It's not going to hinder your flight performance, um, but it does have a fisheye effect. However, the fisheye effect isn't as bad as the, the Emacs Tiny Hawk Freestyle. That one's a little bit more. This one's not that disorienting, so you can keep that in mind as well. Also, the video transmitter is okay. I'd give it like a 6 out of 10. And the Emacs Tiny Hawk Freestyle one, the new one, I would have given it like a 4.5 out of 10. So this one's okay. It's not the best. Uh, but it'll get you going. But for me, it's a little bit different because I'm flying in bandos. I have a lot of ba abandoned buildings, if you don't know what that means. There's a lot of interference, a lot of metal everywhere. So uh, I usually need a better video transmitter um, in those areas. Now, the ESC and flight controller are really great. Now, I know for a fact the ESC is really great because these motors on 3S take uh i think uh thir 12 amps or 13 amps which we're going to take a look because i've done the thrust test right now we're going to take a look at the xl as well and the flight footage as well so you kind of see how everything is so now let's talk about the pid tune now when you first get it and go fly it's going to fly like absolute crap absolute crap so what you want to do is you want to obviously tune it i'll give you my settings right here they're not the best but they'll get you going just fine without vibrations without the motors getting hot just put those exact numbers into yours. You'll be able to fly just fine. Uh, later on, I might go in for another session when I replace the camera to tune it a little bit more, but you should be able to enjoy it just fine the way it is like that. And just work your way from that. If you want to learn, it's a really nice platform to learn on. Now, I've only flown this on three SHVs. So um, if you fly on two SHVs, I don't know how it's going to perform, but I will be giving you the thrust test right now. So let's go ahead and grab up the Excel sheet here and take a look at the thrust tests before going into the flight footage. All right, so here's the thrust tests for the motors of the Eoshin Tyro. Now, I've tested them on a 2SHV voltage and also 3SHV voltage. This is recommended for 3SHV voltage. That's what I flew it on and it performed great. Now, if we take a look at the blue bars here, this represents the grams of thrust. Sometimes I mess up and say kilogram of thrust, but it's grams of thrust. So we see on a 2SHV, it peaked at 136 grams of thrust at 6.6 .6 amps. It's not that efficient like other toothpick class motors because also this motor is slightly larger. This motor is an 1104, so it is one millimeter or yeah, one millimeter larger than most of the other toothpick class. So it is put into the brushless micro quadcopter classes and not the toothpick because of that. So keep that in mind also. Now, if we move along to the 3SHV test, we see that it, this is pretty crazy. It got 228 grams of thrust at 12 amps. Now, 12 amps is pretty high. To get a quarter of a kilogram of thrust on a tiny motor is pretty insane. So theoretically, if you had a battery that could output uh, four times 11 here current, this thing would roughly peak at one kilogram of thrust on this little brushless micro quadcopter so it is pretty darn powerful um the flight characteristics was good you're not gonna have to fight it just make sure you tune it and uh you could take these results as you please later on i'm compiling every single toothpick brushless micro quadcopter i get and motors and testing them and i have a bunch of data and i need to figure out a nice way to present all of that data into something comprehensible because there's quite a lot of data and it just it's it's really difficult to put it into sense so right now i'm still trying to figure out a way to do that 
Um, so all of this will make more sense later on and I think should be pretty interesting. I'm just doing that uh, just to see what we get and what would be the best overall efficiency slash uh, powerful motor that you can get for a brushless micro quadcopter or toothpick class. So overall, would I recommend you buying it? Well, if you had 67 bucks and you really wanted to try something out, yeah, it's going to fly pretty good, but just be careful where you fly. If you're going to fly in grass, I highly doubt you'll break it like I broke mine. Mine was just on concrete sliding, um, but the overall performance is totally there, and that's something really nice. Uh, don't forget to add the low ESR capacitor here, and uh, that'll just make sure the tuning process would be a little bit easier for you or better for you because they're pretty powerful motors here. Now, they're not the smoothest motors on the planet. Some of them do have a little vibration. You could feel it when you spin them. And also in testing, it's not that bad and it really didn't affect the tune that bad. It didn't even affect the tune at all, which is a good sign. So it's not that terrible, but it is something to take note of here. And again, you're only paying like, what, 70 bucks uh, for this kit. And um, well, that's it, guys. I'm gonna leave you guys with flight footage. You guys make your own decision. Let me know what you think down in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.